Hello, DIYers and woodworkers. Man here with Heartwood Art. And today, I'm going to show you how I made this custom 2x2 two two dowel jig. It's made out of 2x2s. Two it's made to drill into 2x2s. Two and it's super easy to make. Hey, if you're enjoying great shop tips like this, be sure to come on over and visit me at heartwoodart.com for more and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Okay, let's dive in. I made this jig to do through dowel joinery on a shoe rack tower as none of my other dowel jigs worked well on 2x2 two two lumber. And you can look above or below this video for the materials and tools list that you'll need for this project. Now for the wood, you can use almost anything for this project as long as you can make two of them that are one and a half inches square and at least three inches long. So you could use a two by two or two by fours. But if you want this custom dowel jig to last and stay true, seriously consider hardwood instead of softwood like pine or fir. Now I used a three inch piece of two by two oak that I got at my big box hardware store. Now it was expensive, like $10 for that three foot piece at Lowe's. It was already dead square with sharp edges and well sanded too, all of which made this project easier to make as accurately as possible. So on my miter saw, I cut off the factory edge on the end to ensure it was dead square. Then I used a combination square to accurately mark my wood for three inches and cut it. Then I marked the next piece and cut it. And now it's time to mark the center for our spacer. Now I'm gonna be super honest with you here. It's not likely that you will get your spacer 100% dead center in this jig unless you're super lucky. That's okay. The jig will still be plenty centered enough to work just fine for through dowel joinery on two by twos. And you may want to practice on scrap wood with making X's and trying to hit it dead square with your center hole punch too. You can see my post on what makes for a good center hole punch as different things work best for different folks. Now I'm gonna apologize for showing you this on one that already has the lines made because I forgot to turn the camera on when I first made it, so I know you'll be okay with that. Hold or clamp your wood pieces butt to face and then line them up on the outer left edges as square as you can. Then mark the center line where they meet. Use a combination square to mark the diagonals as accurately as possible. Then use a center punch to mark the intersection of those lines. And now it's time to mount your wood for spacer hole drilling. Now this part does require you to be as precise with your drilling as possible. I recommend using a drill press. If you don't have one, then hopefully you can have some other method to keep your drill perfectly perpendicular to the wood. Now I have this drill press, but I don't have a drill press vise. So here's a setup I eventually used to hold my wood. And I'll show you an alternative with fewer clamps in a moment. I sandwiched it in between two other small two by four cutoffs that I made when I created my dowel jig prototype. And here's another angle to that setup. I used Irwin quick release clamps on the outer wood. And here's the other side. I used an F-clamp for the main piece as I just like it for tight holds better. And here's a shot from the front. And you can use whatever clamping methods work best for you. Now, here's my alternative setup that I used on the prototype. As you can see, I simply clamped all three pieces together from the side and then I clamped the whole thing to the drill press. Look at your lineup from all angles. It's not likely that your bit will deflect any, if at all, but you want to be as accurate with it as possible. And if you're cutting through oak, expect to see and smell a bit of smoke. Now that's some hard wood, unlike the pine. 
that I was using here. Now it's time to mark the wood blocks to be joined. And I apologize for the fuzziness of this video. Place your block so that your spacer hole is on the right of the top block and line them up carefully. Now if you flipped it over, you may want to mark another center line. On the side opposite your spacer hole, use your center punch to mark two points to pre-drill for the screws that will hold the two blocks together. I place mine near the corners, just over one quarter inch in. And you want them far enough apart to hold good, but not close enough to the edge to risk splitting it. Okay, now it's time to choose screws and a bit for your pilot holes. Now for this project, I used a number eight by two and one half wood screws. This is the right type of screw thread for hardwood. Construction screws are not the right thread type for hardwood. So be sure you match the screw thread type to the type of wood that you're using for this project. The size of the bit that you use for pre-drilling your screw holes will depend on what type of screw that you're using. And the type of screw will depend on the type of wood that you're using, as you need different threads for hardwood and softwood. So go see my post on how to choose the right bit for drilling pilot holes. Okay, let's drill those holes. Again, precision matters here. These screws are long and they need to go in straight. And I use the same sandwich setup at the drill press as I did before. But the one shown here was the simpler setup on my prototype. And when you're done with the holes, be sure to also countersink for the screw head type that you're using. Okay, we got the first block pre-drilled. Now you need to extend those pilot holes into the second block. I use quick release clamps to hold the blocks together and then secure them to the bench. Hand drilling like this is naturally going to make the holes in the front block a wee bit bigger, but that's okay as long as you don't hollow them out too much. Just drill as straight as you can and be super careful not to break that small bit. And I had to change my clamp configuration to pre-drill that second hole. Now, as you can see, the holes have been started in that second block. Now, here's a trick to ease putting screws into hardwood if you're using that. And my dad taught me this trick. When screwing into hardwood, you need a little something to lubricate it. I prefer candle wax to bar soap, but either will work. Just ensure that you get unscented candles so that they have no oils in them. Now, candles are crazy cheap at the dollar store. They stay wrapped in their plastic for easy handling, and they don't flake off as much as some soaps. And you don't have to worry if they get a little wet. So scrape your screw across the candle to get some wax into the grooves. You don't need much, just so it's loaded then twist it smooth. Go a little slow with it until you can get this long screw started squarely. And just go a little into the second block. Don't tighten it all the way down yet. Adjust your clamps if needed and then start on that second screw. and drive it all the way in. Then drive the first screw all the way in. Doing it this way will keep the block square. Okay, now it's time to remove the seam in your seamless spacer. So don't let that description fool you. There is a seam, it's on the inside, and you'll need to clear it before you can insert it into your block. Now, this is important. I'll show you how I smooth the inside of the spacer, but you need to choose a way that you feel safe doing this part of the project. The spacer itself needs to be secured so that it can't move. And the speed of the drill needs to be slow with a firm grip so that it does not catch on the seam and harm your wrist or produce so much heat that it welds the bit to the spacer. Now here's how I secured the spacer. And you may want to add another flat board under this whole setup like a scrap piece of plywood so you don't drill into your bench top. 
I got a tight hold on it with a pair of large vice grips. Then I clamped the vice grips in two places to the corner of my bench. Now you'll be grinding metal on metal, so you need a lubricant to help the drill bit cut without causing so much friction as that causes heat and can weld the two pieces of metal together. Use lightweight machine oil, like 3-in-1 oil. Do not use WD-40 for this. It evaporates. And set the torque on your drill down between 6 and 10, whatever works for you. Now, you want the drill to stop spinning if it gets bound. Otherwise, it could jerk and you could get hurt. Insert the bit and rotate the drill around just a little to spread some of the machine oil on the inside of the spacer. And you can see that I had to turn my torque up a bit so that the drill was still under my control, but so it had enough power to start shaving off the seam. Hold the drill as straight as you can and apply just a little bit of pressure. And let the bit do the work. Don't press hard into it. You'll feel when it shaves off the seam. And you can see that I forgot to put the piece of plywood underneath and I left myself a nice memory on my bench. So check the clearance by hand to ensure your 3 8 bit can glide through the spacer. Now it's time to prepare the spacer to be inserted into the block. Now that spacer is as smooth as glass. You need to rough it up a little bit to give the epoxy something to bond with. I used an old piece of sandpaper to scuff it up, and I chose to go up and down as that way the scratches would line up with the direction I would be inserting the spacer into the wood and not bind. Now for the epoxy, I used Gorilla Quick Set Epoxy that sets up in five minutes. I used a piece of wax paper under this whole project, then I squirted out my Quick Set Epoxy into a corner of it. And then I remembered to put on my gloves. Mix that epoxy well and for as long as the package directions say to do it. Don't skimp on this process. You need that spacer to bond with the wood block and take spinning drill bit pressure and not come loose. So, spread the epoxy onto the spacer. You only need a thin layer, but it needs to be covered all over. Now, insert your spacer as squarely as you can, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Use your C-clamp or other press fit tool to insert the spacer into the block hole. Now, as you can see, my C-clamp has a metal end on the top, and that's the end I have next to the spacer where most of the epoxy is likely to leak out. If your tool has a plastic or rubber edge, you may need to take precautions to ensure the epoxy does not melt or stick to it. And then wipe everything off immediately. And yes, that epoxy will permanently stain the wood. It would have to be sanded off, and you don't really want to do that at this point. And clean your C-clamp immediately, too, before the epoxy has time to set up. Now, read the directions on your epoxy for the proper cure time. And keep in mind that there is setup time and then fully cured time. Honestly, I would let this thing sit so that both sides of the spacer can fully dry for a full 24 hours before using it. Well, I sure hope you've enjoyed making this custom 2x2 dowel jig. Be sure to come on over and visit me at heartwoodart.com and subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the shop.